BattleBots is the most brutally destructive robot fighting competition in the world. And this one? This one's ours. A portion of this video is sponsored by Google Meet. You guys have been bugging me to build a BattleBot for years now. Unfortunately, building a BattleBot is a full-time job. So when a local university reached out asking for sponsorship, I decided to do them one better. And I put the full resources and might of Hacksmith Industries at their disposal to build a battle bot. Hey guys, nice to meet you. Guys. Hey, welcome. Welcome. Nice to meet you. Hello, we are the Waterloo BattleBots team. We are hoping to pitch to you um, the first AI battle bot. We already had decided we were sponsoring the team, assuming their idea was reasonable. Um, so we were kind of sitting there, posturing, sitting back in our nice chairs with our, our notepads, trying to stress them out a little bit. So they had stuff running in the simulator, running the same code that they planned to run on the robot and on the drive station, already running in a simulator, running in Unity. I mean, that really proved that they have what it takes to write the autonomous code that they were planning. I think the pitch was really well put together. There was a lot more design that was already completed and finalized and there was a couple of renders and figured out like how everything's gonna go together, how everything's gonna work, was really, really critical. So yeah. Yo. This is actually a briefcase of fake money. <laughs> we'll cut you guys a check. This, this is amazing. Thank you guys so much. No problem. Welcome to the team. Thank you. This portion of this video is sponsored by Google Meet. Here at Hacksmith Industries, we use Google Meet constantly. Morning meetings, Hacksmith.store brainstorming, and even for talking to our fans. If you don't know what Google Meet is, let me give you a rundown. It's like your virtual gathering spot. Sure, it's awesome for meetings and BattleBot strategy sessions, but it's also perfect for catching up with friends and family no matter where they are or what device they're on. Some of the features we love and use constantly are screen sharing and noise cancellation. Because as you know, things can get kind of hectic here. This is with the noise cancellation on. And this is with the noise cancellation off. So noise cancellation is crucial, as you can see. Oh, and the screen sharing thing? It's like passing the virtual remote. Perfect for showing off projects or watching a YouTube video. If you got an Android phone, Google Meet is already right there, hanging out with your contacts and messages. And if you're rolling with iOS, no sweat. Just grab it from the App Store. Give Google Meet a try using our link below. Big thank you to Google Meet for sponsoring this portion of the video. This is our BattleBot Orbitron. Orbitron is a dual vertical spinner with a self-riding arm on top. The big thing that attracted me to Orbitron was their use of AI. This has never been done before in BattleBots, and BattleBots is pretty much all about human reflexes. And you know what's faster than human reflexes? Computers. They have this design, it can literally, by holding a button, just orbit around the enemy wherever the enemy is going. And then you just press another button called kill, and it'll just beeline right into that bot. So if this works, it could change BattleBots forever. Steven designs the robot, Peter's doing a lot of the software. Then we have Adam, Ethan, Layla, and Matthew. They're gonna be helping with the electronics, the software, a bit more machining, assembly. Steven and Peter, who are brothers, actually got second place at the first World Championship in 2018. And if that wasn't good enough, the next year in 2019, they took home first place. They are literally world champions at robotics. And besides our two lead designers being first world champions, everyone on the team has competitive robotics experience. In addition to the student team, Bogdan and Ben, who will be helping mentor the team, are seasoned robotics competitors. So besides footing the bill for most of what they need, we're also able to connect them with all of our sponsors and manufacturing partners, enabling the team to get heavy discounts and sometimes even free components. When the team came to us, they had received sponsorship from the University of Waterloo of about $10,000. Rapid Enterprises, they're doing the machine frame components for us. Aligu donated a few 3D printers to the team at the university. There's Maxamps. Maxamps is the premier battery supplier for BattleBot. Trampa as well, they are one of the most popular ESC manufacturers for BattleBot. DemTools, local machine shop. They're the ones that machine some of the aluminum pieces. Princess Auto, one of our main channel sponsors, threw some gift cards at the team to use for supplies. BattleBots always feels like the next step up from whatever I've done. I think we're all super excited because it's a really fun sport and I think it's something we can do really well in. Most teams, when they want to compete in BattleBots, they start in the lower weight classes. We're jumping straight to 250 pounds. We're going straight to the top. Whenever you're starting a big complex project like this, the first thing to do is you want a prototype. So we've had Steven send us the CAD files for the whole frame. We're going to be 3D printing them on our Bamboo Labs printers. We're going to put it together, see how it goes together, see what changes we need to make, make sure the design works, and we'll go from there. So up to this point, we've made the plastic bot. We 3D printed it here. 
and Peter has been working on a lot of the software. But now we're validating that against the plastic bot at our shop. Just waiting for our metal frame pieces to come in and then full steam ahead on the chassis. Hey Peter. Yeah. What do we have here? Um, I just unplugged it. <laughs> so we got Wasta right now. Almost there. We're on our way down to Rapid Enterprises in Vaughn. They've generously sponsored the BattleBots team by making us our mainframe components. Yeah, it's like a cat. Feels solid. Packing them up. So we're about a month away from the competition. We're still missing the main metal components for the chassis. Those should be here mid next week. We can put the chassis together. For now, we're still testing driving the plastic bot around. We now have the camera set up trying to track its movement with the gyro. And we finally got the weapon motors last week. So we hooked those up to the ESCs and we're gonna spin them up for the first time. Our frame pieces finally showed up. It's time to put the chassis together. Pretty fast, guys. Some of the holes aren't drilled, so we're gonna have to mark those and drill them, tap them ourselves. The chassis went together as intended. Um, we got the wheels on. No motors, no electronics yet, but that'll come the next time it goes together. We're still a little bit worried about the weight. We weighed it in. We are, we think reasonable, <laughs> but it's still, there's a lot of metal there and there's a lot more that has to come. So today we want to get the electronics in the bot or at least start getting them test fitted, see what our wires look like, all that. We also want to get this spinner assemblies tested without the spinners. We're still waiting for the actual spinners to come in. We're End of next week is the goal, so more time crunches. <laughs> but we want to get the motors mounted, we want to get the motors spinning, and we want to get the pulleys in to validate our belt lengths and make sure the belts have tension. And I'm very excited to see this uh, do inappropriate things to other things. <laughs> Can we talk about this power adapter yeah. right here that's just hanging yeah. loosely? Oh. That's chaos! Well, apparently that's fine and it's normal, so... Yeah, I guess so. Alright, sorry, what you're about to show me? Okay, so this is our robot controller GUI. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, this is uh, the field and simulation. And as you can see here, the field is not quite aligned with the corners of our GUI. So what we can do now is uh, adjust these around so that they line up. So in the field, when we set up the camera, uh, we don't have to set it up exactly. We can just manually adjust it to whatever we need. Something tells me you've done this before. You don't like to brag, but... A little bit. A little bit. Today we got our first working demo of the autonomous driving. So we have a simple two control schemes. We got avoid and kill. So that was totally automatic and it nicely aligned it so then I don't have, I'm not going to overshoot them. Actually, I can see it on all of them. All the tires are coming up. Oh no. One, two, this one is walking. The tires are shifting. We're not exactly sure why. Um, Ethan has a good point in that we did not sand these or degrease them before we casted them. So there's likely a bonding issue because we want the polyurethane to adhere to the actual uh, core as well. But I would think that the physical grooves you can see there would hold it on laterally, but that's not the case. Hold them off. Like literally. I'm just taking the rubber off. It just came off. Um, we're, we've gone and made some changes. We took the wheel, we sandblasted it. So now we got a nice rough surface that the, the urethane should have a nice good grab on. We're tapping these holes and we're going to install these big lugs, like tread lugs, that are going to go in the here and the urethane is going to be cast around to help the, hold the wheel on. And we're properly degreasing the parts, removing all the, the oils, anything off the surface. So it should stick amazingly, or should stick a lot better than it did last time. Are you hiding the dread and anxiety that comes with building a battle bot for a competition? So I've been building competitive robots for eight years at this point. I'm, I'm good at suppressing those feelings. If you break the momentum, you're never going to get it done. You just, you see a problem, you got to fix it. It's all, it's all you can do. Are these guys good at uh, suppressing their uh, feelings about the project? All of them have also done competitive robotics for four or five years, so I hope so. Seems like it. <laughs> you're not nervous over there, are you? You're looking nervous. I think it'll be okay. Are you nervous, Bogdan? No, I've also done competitive robotics for <laughs> five but, or like, six years. Just because you've done competitive robotics doesn't mean you've won 
competitions for Quebec. Or <laughs> Actually, right? no. I uh, I'm the champion of Canada for mechatronics in uh, in skills. So, wow, brag uh, about <laughs> it. Brag about it. Check this out. Did you say check this out and then you tried doing it and then nothing happened? I didn't see that. Champion of I thought Canadian they robotics. I thought they moved. Right here, the everybody. Bottom already. Okay. I worked in a team of two, not in a team of like eight. Uh, yeah, and the other person probably did all the work, eh? <laughs> yeah, you know I could replace you with a tripod, right? All right, the spinner showed up. <laughs> Let's go see. This is only the most important part of the robot. It's the last missing piece of the puzzle. Oh, oh nice. Oh. <laughs> so that's very kind of cool. Do you guys know who your competition is? They are a giant horizontal spinner. So our spinners go on this axis. Mm -hmm. So they spin up like that. Theirs is much bigger. It's probably the width of our robot. Yep. And then it spins like that. Does it have a so. name? It is Roundhouse. So this is this is our bot. And we thought this was moderately sized and this is this is the size of Roundhouse's weapon, roughly. <laughs> it's bigger than our bot in every dimension. The question is, can we take one big hit from a weapon that weighs 80 pounds, is that long and that wide? Like, I'm pretty sure that's comparable to the amount of energy in Tombstone, and we've seen what robots of this size and just as robust build have uh, have taken from Tombstone, and it's not pretty. So Bogdan, how's your confidence now? What's the confidence level at now that you've seen the weapon? If we survive, <laughs> we're in really good shape for the actual competition. Are you guys used to the camera yet, or are you guys still freaked out by it? <laughs> it's different still. It's kind of cool to show off the process, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, what did we change from last time? We changed the tires, which you can't see, but internally they're different. That's the main thing for performance-wise. Otherwise, there's some paint on there. It's assembled a little bit nicer. So yeah, the real thing we want to test right now is, if we turn, do the tires delaminate or come off the sides? No, what are we, what are we gonna do, Peter? Oh, We're gonna make it faster. It's gonna zoom. How much? How much power do you have now, Stephen? Thirty percent. Are you scared? Yes, because I don't know which way is forward. I just feel it my hand. You can't. You know where the camera is? A little warm. Hurt. And the AC is at thirty-four degrees. Battery's good. That's all good still. No issues. We are installing the first spinner. Yeah. We have a shaft. There you go. That was easy. Does it spin? Ah, that's balanced. It's asymmetric, but it's balanced because we have the tooth over here, so that's a lot of extra mass. And so then on this side, if you notice, this pocket is a little bit shallower than the side ones. So then the center of mass is still on the axis. So even though it's asymmetric, you'll see it doesn't fall to any one point. We love what we do here at Hacksmith Industries, and it's all thanks to our YouTube members who help support this channel and our crazy projects. If you want to become a YouTube member, it's as simple as clicking the join button right next to subscribe. You'll get access to behind the scenes content, early releases of videos, and discounts at hacksmith.store. I'll see you in the next members update. Take the MOSFETs and combine them into one is. So basically yesterday we got most of this thing together and tried to run some calibration on the motor. And what we think happened is one of the lugs was a little bit loose, and because of that, the calibration value was off. So uh, when we tried to run the second part of the calibration and spit up the motor, that completely fried the motor controller because it was trying to run more power than it was supposed to. And now it looks and smells really bad and no longer works. Luckily, we figured out what some of the issues were and figured out how to do it properly. And now that we know how to do it, we can replace all the speed controllers, re-extend all the wires, and hopefully get the robot driving by tomorrow. How's the stress level with the blow-ups last night? These are, these are $700 ESCs. Um, we only have four spares. We are ordering more. But at this rate, <laughs> or two in the last two days, it's fine. by the competition will be out. <laughs>
we are full systems test. Spinner's up to full speed, drive full speed. We're gonna see how it behaves in kind of the more dynamic condition with the spinner spinning with the robot spinning. Hey Ben, a little worried about that one? I told Tyler, this is the most expensive thing he's probably ever forced with to be for. One of the main tests we want to do right now is to see if having both spinners on during a turn will properly cancel out the gyroscopic precession. So theoretically with just one spinner, when you turn the robot really quickly, one of the wheels will lift off the ground. With two, there should be absolutely no effect. Well, let's see what $20,000 can do. Like a plane taking off. That's the whole reason we do two spinners. It's that spin right there. Yeah. It's the domestic robot from Warframe. We built the small prototype for them, but then we want to make it bigger for their 10th anniversary celebration. Warframe is an amazing game with space combat and aliens and robots. It's exactly what we're into. If you don't get that bot going, you guys have to forfeit the match. You know that, right? Oh boy. Alright, so this was all fun and games. We need a real opponent, such as an unbreakable box. Half inch polycarb, double layer. We got stainless steel walls. Unbreakable. Bye bye, unbreakable box. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Ah, launched it. It shattered the polycarb. That's hard to do. It's really hard to do. One chunk of half inch polycarb. This is bullet resistant. All right, the bot is done and we are cutting it close. We gotta drive this RV 72 hours to Las Vegas in order to make it there for our fight. If you guys are as excited about this as we are, consider becoming a YouTube member to help support the channel and crazy projects like this. Plus, we'll be uploading the raw, unedited fight right here as soon as we can. But if you're not a YouTube member, don't worry about it. We post videos weekly, and we'll have the full video up as soon as we can.